بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أحمده وأصلي على رسول الكريم الحمد لله على آلائه الحمد لله والأرض بالإتقان بلا نصير ولا معين رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأهل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي آمين يا رب Today I think uh, after about two weeks I'm doing this recording again inshallah and uh, I want to say Eid Mubarak to everyone and I also want to say that today's conversation even though my throat isn't very good but today's conversation is uh, critical and important to understand the world that we live in philosophically and politically so let's inshallah proceed i want to spend as uh, little time uh, so bismillah alhamdulillah this is what i'm going to talk about uh, first is uh, atheism and liberalism which was the result of the renaissance that when the european thinkers and intellectuals were quivering in their boots, were shaking in their boots from the fear of the Pope, when they had no hope that their ideas would ever become a reality. At that time, one of the ideas they came up with is that we want freedom from religion and from anything divine, and we want a world that is secular, basically. And they had the you can say the embryonic understanding of this idea of secularism. And so <clears throat> they wanted absolute freedom and no, a life of no restraints and you're not answerable to anything divine, you're only answerable to the state. And that's it. That's where it all started. <clears throat> now all levels of normative behavior are being challenged. That's where it started about 600, 700 years ago. And now all normative behaviors are being challenged. Who is a man, who is a girl, completely new definitions. Completely new way of looking at uh, things that were considered normal. The definition of religion has changed. Religion doesn't have the same definition that if you open the dictionaries of over a hundred years ago. I remember one professor telling me under a discussion we were having about Islam that a hundred years ago the definition of religion was a way of life. What has religion become now? So this secular world redefined the meaning of religion itself. And all religions have essentially given in to that definition. Which, in short, because this is not my conversation today, but the definition that secularism wants to give religion is what? Or let me say the role assigned to religion is what? The role assigned to religion in modernity and under a secular state is your job is to help alleviate the pain the pain people have. Why, why are we suffering? Okay, you're suffering. Okay, you need God. It's like a pill. God is a look, good luck charm. Or he's a pill. You are suffering. You need, a, you need to help yourself. So they send the chaplains to the hospitals. They send the chaplains to the jails. Now the people who are smart can read what I'm saying. But all forms of normative traditional values, family values, what is marriage, what is a good person? What is a decent person? All this is being challenged. And it comes with a coherent, intellectual, financial, institutional backing. All these changes and all these thinking processes, sexual anarchy, anyone can just have intimacy with anyone as long as they're consulting adults. Even that is now going to change from adults to 
younger ages. But the as long as there's <coughs> consent, marriage, n norms of marriage, the norms of uh, of religion, the norms of fam family values, the norms of who, what is male, what is female, what is money, what is justice, all of this, the normative value is gone. Respecting the elders, gone. What is the result of this? How does Islam become reformed by this? So this is what um, one of the things I want to mention. That <coughs> as normative values break, as traditional values break, people will come up and say, oh, we got a better understanding of Islam now. Islam is actually this, not what it was before. So, as the times change, as the normative values, traditional values, religious values, the anti-liberal values, the... Uh, not anti -liberal, but liberal values increase as the religious ideas uh, get challenged. What will happen? Muslims will stand up, scholars, great scholars with great names, like this person who gave the Hajj in Arafah this year, who thinks that Jews are his brothers and that uh, he needs to uh, kiss their feet. And so all these reformers, different types, some will even claim to be the Mahdi and some will claim to be prophets and some will claim to be, you know, the Mujaddid of the century. And these reformers will come and try to reform Islam from its past because in order to become more palatable to the current uh, anti-fitra, anti-nature way of life that the West has developed. And so on the one side you have, you can say, a force and energy, a backing financially, institutionally, intellectually, change the norms of humans to the maximum. This is what Shaitan said. I will change the creation of Allah. I will force them to change their creation. The creation of Allah. Take the genes and do genetic engineering. Change the creation of Allah. Change the nature of things. Change the nature of medicine change the na nature of disease let's create them in the lab so we can make more money create the disease and then create the solution create the cure man-made not from nature so on the one side all the energy of liberalism of being backed by the western institutions of financial institutions and other institutions, government institutions, uh, intellectual institutions from the universities. And universities will have conferences upon conferences on transgenders and their rights and so on and so forth, having that backing. So as this increases, as the change increases, as technology redefines who we are, this is a different discussion, which I'll have one day, then Islam will be reformed accordingly by people who will claim that they now finally got what Islam is really saying. Keep this in mind <coughs> as we move into the future. So then, there's another component to this change. The method to reform Islam if we want to understand it, just look at what happened to the American Indians and to the black Americans. What happened? The American Indians, it was their land. Those that would not go by what the government institution wanted, and they wanted to stand up and fight back, were called savages and barbarians, the American Indians. Those that wanted to stand up and fight. You're a barbarian. You don't want peace. You don't want Abrahamic Accords. You don't want peace. You want to fight. 
the American Indians like, what do you mean I want to fight? This is my land. You're taking away my land. No. The noble savage, the good one of you is the one who will make peace and will accept our cultural, intellectual, financial, technological dominance. And those of you that stand and fight, fight against us, you're the savages, you're the fundamentalists. And you... يُبَدِّلُ طَرِيقَ كُمُ الْمُثْلَى What was said about Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, that he, Fir'aun said, he, Musa wants to change your way of life from the way that we've given. So on the one side, you'll have reformers who want to make Islam palatable to the new Western idea of what religion should do. And on the other side, you will be told, if you protest, you're a fundamentalist. If you protest, you're backwards and you're a savage. This tactic of calling Muslims fundamentalists and all of these different words that they use, moderate Islam versus fundamentalists and versus all these different things. These are tactics of the old. These are not new tactics. This has been used to, to, to divide people amongst themselves. Oh, you're a good puppy. You're a moderate Muslim. Sit down. He, oh, he is fundamental. Don't be like him now. And the Muslim is standing up and saying, what do you mean? It's our land. It was the land of my forefathers. I'm Palestinian. I've been here. You just came 30 years ago. So they will play this card of the savage. Call you backwards. Call you uncivilized. Call you undemocratic. And they will then put their backing and their money and their financial resources and everything to what? To those Muslims who are the good puppies and to those Zionist sheikhs out there that will be doing their bidding. <coughs> and the same thing they did with what? They did with the African American community in America. They started to label people who are the good black people. If you're with the Black Panthers, you're this. If you're with Malcolm X, you're this. If you're with Martin Luther King, then you're this. You're a good African-American and you're a bad African-American. You're backwards because you want to go back home to Africa. All these things. These are not new things. And then I want to talk about how the West is presenting a coffin in a better color. What do I mean by that? They're offering you a way of life that leads to its own demise. But their example is like the person who beautifies the coffin. Or in our case, as Muslims will say, beautified your coffin. So the coffin is, you know, the white sheets that you have, the two white sheets. So they're beautifying it. Trying to make your coffin look more, this coffin is more beautiful. And then in the words of Iqbal, their eggs are dirty. Meaning, this is the same word used in the, or the same idea given in the Bible, which is that know the tree by its fruits. Today we're going to look at one of the most interesting, interesting fruits of the West. This is going to make you really go crazy. I mean, when I first saw this, one of the brothers who listens to my videos, he sent me this video. I was like, this is subhanAllah, this is like so crazy, right? So I took the information from that video and then I did my own, you can say, um, a, a gathering of, of, of information around that idea. So I will be sharing that with you to give you the example of where this society is heading. And how blind Muslims are just following along. 
following along. And then the 10 years go by, 20 years go by with all this financial backing. And then these reformers come up and these labels come up of who's a good Muslim, who's a bad Muslim. And lo and behold, two, three decades later, people will not know the difference between the dynamic orthodoxy of Islam. Dynamic orthodoxy of Islam, not still stagnant orthodoxy. The dynamic orthodoxy of Islam. They will not know their history. They'll, they'll be just like, why don't we have an Islam that's palatable, that feels good for the world that we live in? Without realizing the world that they live in, that's being sold to them, is just a coffin with better colors. If that. So now let me get started with the Quran after saying this. So this was my introduction to these verses of the Quran. In Surah Al-Nahl, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in ayah number 26, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ عَوْذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ كَفَ قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ those people before, they schemed, they plotted, they planned, they conspired, they made conspiracies against Allah and Islam and the deen and his prophet and the believers, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَآتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to them from their foundations. What are their foundations? At the level of their... You know, they made a building, the building goes high. You, The building rests on its foundations. Okay? قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ مِنْ قَوَائِدِ That from the foundations of that building, Allah came and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it fall from its, the roof fell after the destruction of its foundations. This is how Allah does it. This can be taken literally. Or it can be taken metaphorically. فَحَرَ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّقَفِ مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ And then the roof caved in. وَأَتَاهُمْ عَذَابٍ And the punishment came to them. مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ From where they didn't even expect. They build these schemes, call you this, you're barbarian and you're backward and, you know, this big building and they make this big building and it's the, it, that big building that you see standing on this big, you know, the, on this foundation and the, has a high roof, right? This is the coffin that they're selling you in better colors. That building is a coffin of yours and theirs if you buy into it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to the very foundations of it. مِنْ قَوَائِدِ from, from, uh, from the foundations. فَحَرَّ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّقَفِ And then that roof fell upon them in فَوْقِهِمْ from above them. وَأَتَاهُمْ عَذَابِ And the punishment came. مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ From where they didn't even expect it. Now what is interesting, I don't have time to discuss Surah Al-Nahl. But when you just look at the overview of this surah, this surah is the most important surah of the Qur'an when it comes to the favors of Allah. This is the surah that mentions, وَإِن تُعُدُّ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تُحْصُوا If you count the favors of Allah, you can't enumerate them. So these people that are plotting and planning, they, they, don't, want, they don't want nature, they don't want Allah's plan. They want their own plan. They want their own plan. They want their own world. They want their own dunya. They're, they're not okay with the plan of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, okay, you made this building and it fell upon you. Then what happens? ثُمَّ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ يُحْزِيهِمْ Then on the day of judgment, Allah will disgrace them even more. They were already disgraced in dunya because their plans went array or awry. Their plans went astray. ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يُخْزِيهِمْ وَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِي And it will be said to them, Where are your partners? Those that you thought, that you made these plans with, those that you were so loyal to and that you served the way you should have served Allah. But you served them, your masters. الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تُشَاقُونَ فِيهِمْ 
Where are those associates of yours for whose sake you used to make arguments against us, against what Allah has created? Those people of knowledge in khizya al-yawma wa su'u ala al-kafirin. The believers will say on that day, the shame and the misery today is for the, those who rejected the truth. You wanted to change the nature that Allah had made in things. And now, this is the interesting part. When the, those angels will come to them, those who had done wrong to their selves, and the angels will be taking away their souls. That Because what did they make these buildings for? They thought they'd stay here just like the buildings. So when the angels will be taking away their souls, salama, they will be trying to negotiate with the angels. Don't take away, don't take us away. وَمَا كُنَّا نَعْمَلُ مِنْ سُوءٍ And they will say, "What? We did not do anything wrong." Bala, but Allah will reply, no, in Allah Alim will be Makuntum Ta'amalun. But Allah knew very well what you were doing. And then Allah says, Fadhulul Abwaba Jahannam Khalidina Fiha. Go into the doors of the hellfire, and you are going to remain there now. And then Fabi'asal Mathwal Lil Mutakabirin. What a miserable residence for the people who have arrogance. You thought you're going to make a world. You thought you're going to make a building. You thought you're going to conspire to make a plan other than the plan of Allah. You're going to make a world that's differently going to function differently than the one Allah made. You don't want families. You want a world where you can behave like animals. You don't want a world where the genders are the ones that Allah gave, but the ones that you have redefined. You want a world where you're not going to use the money Allah made as money, gold and silver. You want to make your paper money. And you're saying today you didn't do anything wrong. You conspired and were loyal to things other than Allah. And you're saying you didn't do anything wrong. You, you made a mockery of Allah and His Messenger made a mockery of his creation, tried to tra change his creation for your own forever livelihood in this world. You tried to change the nature of things and the divine rules. And so the punishment came to you and now you're like, we didn't do anything wrong. Many Muslims will fall into this too. Many Muslims also will be looking at that coffin that looks better. That building, that plotting and that planning. And there are the Muslims that say what? Don't talk about conspiracy theories. Don't talk about conspiracy theories means that you don't know that Shaytan is out there conspiring against Islam and Muslims. You don't know that. And you don't know Shaytan. Have you not read the Quran? That the Quran teaches us that Shaytan is talking to Shayateen amongst the humans. And that they're conspiring against Islam. Don't you see the direction in the which the world events are going and you don't see conspiracy against Islam and Muslims and against humanity? That's because you have been sold a coffin that seems to look better than other coffins. Or a coffin, you can say. Maybe the English word coffin comes from coffin. I don't know. Anyway, Allahu A'lam. So, before I go further, because today's conversation is going to be getting more interesting, inshallah. قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ Those before also schemed. Against Allah and His Messenger. فَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ Allah came to the very foundations of their qawaid, of to the very bases of their foundation, the structures of their... فَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ Allah came to their buildings, to their structures. 
from the foundations, their plots and plans that they had built up. You know, and today we know that when you make a building, you need a blueprint. You have that whole plan, right? That this uh, room will be this many feet and we'll have this and this. Anyway, this is people that know what I'm talking about. قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ مِنَ الْقَوَائِدِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala came to their buildings from their very foundation. They were up high thinking, oh, we're, we're so good in the cloud nine. But Allah is going to come at the very foundations of your society. And خَرَ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّقَفِ And then the roof will just fall. And when it comes down, you know, Allah's punishment, if you read the Quran, doesn't happen like, you know, uh, when it comes collectively upon the people, not individually, when it comes collectively upon the people, it doesn't happen like one degree, two degree, three degree, four degree, like little by, no, it happens spontaneously, boom. <laughs> the roof will fall down upon them, min fall on top of them. And the punishment will come to them in yashurun from where they didn't even expect. And then what? When the punishment comes, the angels of death will be there. And, and then, but Allah is taking a picture here. Allah will humiliate them on even more than this humiliation. Allah will show them in the next life. And then when those angels of death are there in the punishment, يَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِ الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تُشَاقُونَ فِيهِمْ Where those people that used to argue against about Muslims and we're experts in terrorism and we're experts about Islam and we're experts in, we're expert reformers of Islam and we understand Islam. You know, who are you worshipping? Who are you following? Who are you loyal to? قَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Those people of knowledge, they will say, إِنَّ الْخِزْيَ الْيَوْمَ اليوم إن الخزي اليوم السوء والسوء على الكافرين. The the humiliation evil today is on the disbelievers. And then what will they say when the angels will be taking away their life? الذين يتوفاهم الملائكة. And when the angels will be taking away their lives, ظالمي لأنفسهم. Those that did wrong to themselves. فألقوا سلاما. They will propose peace and they'll say. We didn't do anything wrong. And Allah is making clear here, if you deny my bee, my honey bee, my natural way, if you deny the honey and the natural way of things, the nahal, the bee, and nature of things that I have created, then you have essentially, you're scheming against me. And you're scheming against my ways. So do your genetic engineering and see what happens. And do your new definitions of male and female and see what happens. And do your uh, new values that are anti-religion uh, and, and, and pro-liberalism and see what happens. فَدْخُلُوا الْأَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمْ Go into the gates of the hellfire. And remain there for near for bi'asal mathwal lil mutakabbirin. And this was why. Why did you make plans other than the ones that were in nature? Why did you try to defeat nature or overcome nature? You did that because you were arrogant, just like the people before. And the result was the same as the people before. Now, let me take this conversation further. To reiterate. The Declaration of Independence, except for Indian savages. So this is exactly what they're doing with the Muslims. Okay, Does the Declaration of Independence really state all men are created equal? Are all people equal in America? Are blacks equal? Are Spanish equal? No. If you don't go by the institutional understanding of, of, of what they consider uh, right, then you're not part of that clause. How the barbarians became noble savages, the changing image of Native Americans in European, uh, uh, you know, maps. Okay. Now, what I want to uh, mention here what would be interesting for people is that there were two opinions amongst European intellectuals. One was of Rousseau and the other was of Hobbes. Rousseau felt 
man is born civilized, and then the institutions corrupt him. Hobbes felt that man is born a savage, and then the institutions civilize him. And the West has chosen of, of these two, mostly Hobbes' opinion. So those that are not seen from the civilization, it's considered that you must become institutionalized to become civilized. So if you're anti-institutional, uh, or if you're anti-government, or if you're anti, you know, if you're into conspiracy theories, you're not considered, you're not, you're not civilized yet. Because according to Hobbes, you to be civilized means you're working well with the institutions, the existing institutions of the time. Anyway, that was a side point. Now I want to talk about what happened as a result and what will happen to you as a result those that give in like the american indians those that gave in and said okay fine look we're we're actually good people we want to work with the government and we want uh, some two cents here and two cents there and we will uh do whatever it takes to be peaceful and we will condemn our own uh, brothers who stand up against the American government and uh, we will give in to what you want. And what was the result of the people that gave in? The result was, as you will see, from noble, from noble savage to wretched Indian. Okay, the result was that if you give in to everything that they have to say, your value will be nothing less than the foam of the sea. So your value will be nothing more, you could say, or nothing more than the value of the foam of the sea, the bubbles of the sea. You have given up everything and you condemned your own brothers who were standing up for you. So what do you want now? You have now bought, and as many American Indians bought, the coffin with better colors. They thought they're going to get some great deal of American reservations and American lands in which they will have their autonomy and look at their situation today. And the same thing with the blacks. The things that were negotiated on, the, on behalf of the blacks are the blacks in, in a much better situation today, really? Or have they been sold a coffin in better colors? So that's, that's what I'm trying to explain is that Muslims are in the same situation. If we're going to give in to everything, are we going to be in a better situation? Or do we need to put up a resistance and reestablish the Khilafah or at least reestablish ourselves outside the parameters of this Dijalic system, which I'm not going to talk about today, but those of you who have been listening to me know what I'm talking about. Of course, what's very interesting is that those that call you barbarians, history has proven that those that call others barbarians are themselves more barbarians than those that they are calling barbarians. Civilizing torture in American tradition. Okay, civilizing torture and American tradition. Okay, so uh, this idea that, you know, we are superior to you just because, just because. These are the people that are arrogant. And these are the people that are going to say, we didn't do anything wrong. And these are the people that will torture you and they will civilize their own torture and call you the bar barbarians you're the fundamentalist you're the you're the backward people now let's come to the you could say the in a sense the more interesting part of the conversation that i wanted to show you today and hopefully someone can get shocked or get therapy shock with what i'm about to show but before i show i wanted to show you this uh couplet by Iqbal 
למה אקבל? He says in the Urdu language, "Uthakar phenk do bahar gali me, ne tahzib ke ande hain gande." He says, "Pick, uthakar phenk do bahar, pick them up and throw them into the streets, into the alleyways, because the new civilization's eggs know the tree by its fruits." This, the eggs of the new civilization are dirty. Throw them away. This is what Iqbal thought of the democratic system. And the evil of it. Uthakar phenk do bahar gali me ne tahzib ke ande hain gande. Pick them up and throw them in the streets because the... the New civilization's eggs, the eggs of this uh, de- degenerated, deformed, uh, genetically manipulated uh, chicken. Its eggs are dirty, so just throw it away. But some people will buy into the idea that this coffin looks better. It has a better color. So what has this new civilization wrought? What has it done? As a result of going against Allah. So this is what I want to now share with you. So let me tell you the, the types of things that are happening. In the, you can say, the dirty eggs of the West. That should give every Muslim, every Muslim should think like, okay, where are we going with this? Where are we going with this? Which direction is the Muslim world headed? Is this where the Muslim world wants to go? So this is the result of plastic surgery. And just watch this. This is going to make you feel disgusted. But it's going to make my point clear. Plastic fanatic. Who is this lady? Did she, what she did to look like when she was young and what's being said about her surgery. Okay. So a New York socialite has spent $5 million. Just look at the amount of money that's been spent. On procedures and does not look like anything of her previous self. It is hard to see why a plastic surgery fanatic is known in the world uh, over as a cat woman. So this lady, she wanted to do what? Plastic surgery to look like what? A cat. A cat woman. She wanted to be known as cat woman. This is, this is where they want to take the Muslim world. Right? This is where they want to take the Muslim world. So they, they, they took, she has now become Catwoman. She spent $5 million doing her plastic surgery. Now, please continue with me. Woman has 10 surgeries to look like in the anime girl. Okay, 10 surgeries. Do you know how much something like that costs? Okay, to look like an artificial plastic thing. And of course, the doctors that do plastic surgery, they're happy to uh, uh, to say yes. And then they also produce their research of how this is psychologically good and all this nonsense that they do. Kids are getting surgery to look like anime characters and BTS members. Okay? People getting surgery okay, to look like these animes. The, this is the this is this is what you want for the Muslim world. This is what you want for the Muslim social fabric in the Muslim world. And then there will be reformers that'll come and say, "Oh, I did plastic surgery too. Just watch, just watch." I wouldn't be surprised if there are already some Muslim scholars. I'll I'll tell you something interesting. In this happened with my dad. And me, and as you know how my eyes are, right? My eyes are a little bit droopy. So, Dr. Israhim, he said, you know, you're, you know, he, one day him and his uh, younger brother, Dr. Absar, we were sitting on a sofa and Dr. Sab was there. So, Dr. Sab said to me, he said, you should look eye to eye. You know, you should be looking eye to eye with the people you're speaking to. Do you think you should get some surgery done? So, a discussion started. 
right? But the idea of surgery to look better uh, is one that is um, naturally a believer, any type of believer will be, it's, it's not in the fitrah to do this, right? It's not in the fitrah. So anyway, I just remember this uh, conversation that we had all of a sudden. Botched surgeries. Of course, there's a lot of these botched surgeries that happen. But wait, the surprise is not over yet. Okay. Bringing frictional characters to life with plastic surgery. And you can just now imagine, right? I mean, I don't have to go through all of this. Like the Barbie doll course. Um, woman spends 53 lakh which is $5,300,000 or, or, uh, in their currency, to turn herself into human Barbie. Family breaks tie. And then meet this lady, the human Barbie, who claims she had only one plastic surgery. She is a human Barbie, whoever she is, right? And uh, I'm not trying to show pictures here. But yeah, that's what, you know, people trying to become Barbie and Ken. Okay? Uh, real life Barbie doll shows off 71,000 jo- plastic surgery job, okay? And then you have 13 people that took plastic surgery to take it to a new level. So this person does it to, you know, become like Barbie doll, and then you can see um, the results of that. I'm not done yet. French couple spends more than $300,000 on plastic surgery to look like Barbie and Ken. This is what makes them happy, okay? Man undergoes 23 surgeries to look exactly like Superman. Okay, I think that was a man from Thailand or one of those, you know. And then the surgery companies, they call themselves, what, Plast Dolls. Uh, eight people who change their appearances to look like animals. Half man, half octopus. So he put this octopus skin on himself. Transformed his arm into a tentacle. Tiger woman, okay, the zebra man, the leopard man, the cat woman, right? She even has a tail. Half man, half lizard. He literally changed his tongue, okay? Astaghfirullah. Cat woman, the man dog. So this guy like literally goes, I I don't even know if this is, doesn't even look true. But but yeah, the, it is true though. I've verified most of this. Meet six persons that did surgery to look like animals. Again, man spent more than $200,000 to make himself look, uh, self look like a tiger. Go eat these plastic surgery to look like a wolf. 11 people have taken plastic surgery to the extreme. And then, you know, of course, there are all these stories of people that have done absolutely ridiculous things. And these are celebrities who have done extensive surgeries uh, you can say, uh, nine people who have undergone extreme body transformations. I'm going to leave this aside. And then, of course, there's the whole genere of celebrities who have undergone gender reassignment surgeries. Okay, so the reassignment of, you know, trying to become male and female. And I'm not saying that just so that people are clear that, you know, of course, the Sharia, if you go to a doctor and the doctor says, well, you do seem to be more on this side. So because there are people that are born it's not clear. So they go to the doctor and let the doctor decide and then make, but be one or the other. This is what Islam says. But no, these guys, they want to, you know, mix it up. Celebrities who have undergone gender reassignment. And then, of course, the result of that is what? The result of that is sex reassignment doesn't work. Here's the evidence. That I'll talk about one day later. Hundreds of trans people regret changing their gender, says trans activist. Okay, that that's the eggs of the West. Okay, is that you do these things? It's American Institute for Plastic Surgery, right? Male to female plastic surgery for no reason. For no reason, other than people are not happy with themselves, and they think they'll be cool cooler if they're the other gender. Somehow, being a different gender is going to solve their problem. So, what is this? Now, 
with this, inshallah, now I will go over the verses again and then the uh, small ending points I want to make again. So with this now in mind, what, is it, what are you doing? What is your scheme? What are you scheming? What are you planning? Right? So, بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قد مكر الذين من قبلهم Those people before also, they did plotting and planning just like you are. You think you're an exception? Oh, Muslims who have been tricked, deceived. You think this coffin looks better than the other coffin? قَدْ مَكَرَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ فَأَتَاهُ اللَّهُ بُنْيَانَهُمْ So Allah came to their structures. مِنَ الْقَوَائِدْ From the foundations. فَخَرَّ عَلَيْهِمُ السَّقَفِ So the roof came down upon them from مِنْ فَوْقِهِمْ On top of them. وَأَتَاهُمْ عَذَابِ And the punishment came to them. مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَشْعُرُونَ Where they didn't even expect it. It hit them from there. ثُمَّ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ And then on the Day of Judgment, يُخْزِيهِمْ They will be even more severely humiliated than what they were humiliated in this world on the Day of Judgment. وَيَقُولُ أَيْنَ شُرَكَائِي And it will be said, where are my partners? Those that you were so devoted to. Where are they today? When I'm taking away your soul. You thought you'll change things, you'll scheme things, you'll make things, you'll manipulate DNA and somehow you'll run away from death at the end? الَّذِي كُنْتُمْ تُشَاقُونَ فِيهِ For whose sake you used to make opposition and arguments for? قَالَ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ And the people of knowledge, they will say, إِنَّ الْخِزْيَ الْيَوْمَ Today, the humiliation is wasu and the evil ala al kafirin is over the disbelievers. Alladina tawafahum al malaikatu. And those when the angels will be taking away their soul, valimili anfusihim, those that had done wrong to themselves. Wa al qus salama. And they will be trying to negotiate, trying to say, peace, peace. Ma kunna na'malu min su. We didn't do anything wrong, they will say. We didn't do anything wrong. We were just scheming against you all. Allah. That's all we did wrong. We just saw a, a coffin that was in better colors. We thought we can change our date of death. بَلَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلِيمُ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ No, but Allah has full awareness of what you were doing. You're plotting and planning. Allah knew it. And you knew it. فَادْخُلُوا الْأَبْوَابَ جَهَنَّمْ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا So now enter the gates of the hellfire. فَلَبِعْسَ مَثْوَلْ لِلْمُتَكَبِّرِينَ This is the end result of the people who are arrogant, who think that they're going to make a world other than the world Allah meant it to be. Right? So now, let me go back to the beginning of my points in the light of this. <coughs> it started with Atheism, liberalism, after the Christian Reformation, the Protestant coming out, then the Renaissance that happened. We want absolute freedom. We don't want any limitations. We don't want anything to do with the divine. And now it's come to what? Change all levels of traditional values. Change merit, definition of marriage. Change who is male. Change who is female. Change... What is money? Change what is justice? Change everything. And then this challenging, changing the creation of Allah. It has the intellectual, financial, institutional backing that will make look make look, look like the coffin you're choosing is a, of a better color. You can change your date of death. And then what will happen as a result? Reformers will come in the name of Islam and say, look, I have understood Islam in a better way. And they will now present Islam in a way to fit this unnatural world that is being created. And then with this reformation, those that don't go with the reform, that those that don't uh, go with the Zionist shiuch, those that oppose the Zionist shayukh will be told what? You're a bad person. You're backward. You're not civilized. You don't want peace. 
and Aya has explained what happened to the American Indians for their peace, what happened to the black Americans for their peace, what happened to every country in Africa and Asia that finally settled for peace. They're selling you a coffin in a better color. O Muslims, do you want a civilization, a way of life that opposes Allah? Do you want a way of life that tells you it's okay to be, do plastic surgery and become a cat or a Barbie doll? Or become like some animal? Or become like some anime? This is the freedom you want? And you know, over here, and this is the dirty eggs that you already see. You already see these dirty eggs. Children born out of wedlock. Alcohol, depression, drugs, suicide, all at its peak. But yet, the West has the ability to somehow take the Muslim minds and say to them, we're selling you a better coffin. We're selling you a better coffin. And the Muslims are, yeah, that coffin looks like Jannah to me. That coffin, the one the West is selling, that building, that plotting and planning, the West is selling with its technology, looks like Jannah to me. I think I could get a new date of my death. Do you really think by having a society that will accept uh, you change yourself into any gender. Okay, no problem. Become like a cartoon. Okay, no problem. Become like an animal. Okay, no problem. If you are of the thinking that this is normal and this is where society should go, then I don't know what to say to such a person. But if somebody has light in their heart, will know this is definitely very problematic. And that Muslims need to be, you know, how you wake up, wake up, wake up. You're sleeping. You're not seeing reality. And if we don't resist now, if we don't resist the Zionist sheikhs, if we don't resist where the society is going now, at this point, if you don't resist, then you, you're going to fall in that building. When it collapses, you'll be there also. Allah only promises to save those from the collapse of that building that warned other people against that plotting and scheming. Do you want the same result that happened to the others, to the American Indians, to the black Americans, to the Africans, to the Asians, to you? Where you'll go from being called a savage, a barbarian, and backward to just becoming wretched. So these are the choices Muslims need to make. And Muslims need to be careful of who, who they're listening to when it comes to reforming Islam, being a mujaddid of Islam, bring, coming out with some new form or a new system of Islam that never existed before. So inshallah today, before I end, I definitely want to say that those of you that if Allah puts it in your heart, definitely consider donating you can go to the comment section and in the comment section there's a link a paypal link where you can help donate any funds that you want for the projects that i have uh and as you know these projects they take uh, a lot of time and resources and money uh and so inshallah if you want to contribute and help me um uh, promote uh, these um ideas and lectures then i will appreciate it uh you know, inshallah ta'ala makes Allah accept the good intentions from all of us. I mean, a coffin in a better color and the eggs of the West, they're just dirty. If you have brains, if you have some sensibility, you will pick them up and throw them into the streets, just like Iqbal said. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته